to writing a freestyle is planning ahead on how to make adjustments. For example, if you get ahead of your music, can you throw in a 10 meter circle to get back on? Why not? I'm known to do that. Um, if you get behind your music, you don't have to go all the way into the corner. You can cut the corner or you could even cut off the end of the arena. You should, as a rider, plan strategies where you can make up time or, you know, adjust the ring to the music. Now, as the judge, um, I can see the wheels turning in the rider's head. Um, they should be able to be adjustable. And so I might, this is going to affect the interpretation score because you haven't written the music, um, but it also might affect your harmony score. Does that help? And then, again, without seeing the actual problem, um, there's a lot of variables. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so speaking of variables, so when you're judging, like how are you trying to determine when a rider is doing something intentionally versus it's just not going well, the movement is not going well, something's going wrong, they're not executing poorly. How do you? Well, I don't think anybody intentionally tries to do something bad. So I'm always hoping they are intentionally asking the horse to do what they're doing in the race. Where the intentional versus unintentional part comes in is whether they have intentionally left out a movement, in which case they get dinged for um, the score or the technical side of having left out a movement and also um, on the technical side for the choreography. Okay. But I think, I think without actually seeing it, it's a little bit hard to explain that. Um, uh, you don't intentionally try and make a mistake. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, I'm always I'm always expecting the rider to try and do it correctly. And interestingly, I've had freestyles turn, start out great, and I'm thinking this is going to be super, and then it goes to heck. But I've also had freestyles and tests that have started out ragged and then get better and better. And they make that so. It, I never assume that this is the way it's going to be for the whole freestyle. Okay. And then on the artistic side of things, the artistic components, do you take any notes on a separate piece of paper or is everything on the score sheet? Yes, and um, a lot of people do. Um, I personally make a note to myself, to, is the prop music and the counter music matching the tempo of the horse's trotting camera? Yeah. In other words, are it, um, does that make sense? Is is so I go T for trot, C for canter. I have a T at the top. I write this for every horse. Is the trot music working for this horse? Is the canter music working for this horse? And by that I mean are the tempos correct? And then I also make notes uh, under the letter P for phrasing. Are the riders trying to ride to the music? And that to me also affects. Freestyles are supposed to hopefully emulate, have a dance-like quality. If the music is changing and the horse isn't, or vice versa, then somehow that's defeating the whole purpose of doing freestyle. So I will make, I have shorthand notes that I make. Different judges do it different ways. Um, but I do make those notes. Because at the end, we have to do an awful lot of writing and an awful lot of decisions, and those notes help. Okay, that's great. So why don't we watch the freestyle? Okay, and I want you all to think about in this freestyle. First, how would you do, this is a first level freestyle, and we are watching it from the side, so that makes it a little bit harder perhaps than watching it from C. Um, so take into account the technical for first level, and then take into account the artistic side. And I'll tell you what this this animal got. This equine got at the end. This is Central Oregon, by the way. 
Your music is now playing. I wonder why we can't hear the music, Mary, because we heard her announce it. Um, if we heard her announce it, we should have heard the music. That is true. I did not change anything. Um, let me go back. Just let me make sure the volume is. Is that uh, somebody pointed out maybe unmuted? Uh, it's on the screen. But you're unmuted. There we go.
Smith and Hartley Porter Creek. That concludes the musical freestyle before. I know about the rest of you. My my um, connection um, was buffering, and so it was kind of hitchy. Uh, Mary said that hers wasn't buffering, so it was probably my internet connection. Um, do, you want, do you want me to replay it? Well, will it get better? Do you think? I can try. Um, also, I mean, let's see. Do people? Okay. Yeah, so other people have the same problem. Very yeah. difficult to watch, either too fast or too and, and when I watched it before we had this group, it was no problem. But you had you know had no problem. A lot of people had no problem. Yeah. I can try again. Um, while I'm setting that up too, we have another question about flying changes. Um, in fourth level, is there a limit to how many changes can be performed in one line? And what's the minimum that must be performed? Um, the minimum is three, um, which is, I'm looking very quickly. Uh, but I think you can do, I would, let me just look real quickly. Um, oh, that's not the first step. That was the actual test. Uh, and I'm here, I'm pulling up the book, so I have it in the wrong place. Good question. I mean, it's an interesting question. Um, fourth level first stuff. Um, okay, flying change, the required movement is flying changes are laid every third stride. They don't require fours. Um, it says minimum of three. So that means you can do more. And you can do more on a curve line if you want to. Does that answer the question? Yep. Um, but it, you have to do at least three because that's what's required in the test. Okay. I would um, think five so would five or doing them on a curved line would, uh, if they were clean, would get you an eight. Okay. So in terms of the video, unfortunately, it's um, it's not a link. It's an actual video. So I think that might be okay. why. It is because it, it has to upload again, um, mm -hmm. but I can try again. And what I'll do is I'll start it and then I'll pause it and see if that gives it a chance to kind of catch up. Okay. So here we we'll try it. We'll try it. I will tell you I gave it a and the Dolly Hannah was the judge. She gave it a seventy six. The music is now playing. Let's see if we can tell right away if it's better. Nope. Right, let me pause it. Maybe it'll catch up. Otherwise, um, if it was a YouTube link, I would just separate, send everyone the YouTube link. Hey, Mike. No, it's still hitching. Still hitching. Okay. Yeah. They might be able to find it on YouTube. Um, uh, Mule, Oregon. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, Art B. Porter Creek is the, is the meal's name. Uh, June 10, 2018. So if you write that down and look for it on YouTube, um, I'm not sure, but it's, it's a real possibility that it's there. Um, now, you couldn't see it uh, because it was hitchy. Um, on the left side or on the technical side, the only place I want... I, I didn't give the lengthenings a seven, I think a 6.5. And I think the medium walk I had at a 6.5 because it, it was a little tight through the back, but everything else was at least a seven. And then on the artistic side, um, she fulfilled everything at, at least a, of the minimum and then went well past it. I don't think there was a test like moment in it, which is hard to do very hard to do. And um, everything she asked that mule to do, he did it. And I I felt there was real harmony there. Um, I loved his ears uh, flopping along happily, which indicated to me that he was uh, comfortable. Um, but, and again, it was difficult to tell from the buffering, but when the music changed, they changed. 